hear you, then it's good. Okay. And uh, it's my pleasure to um, introduce the last speaker of this session, uh, Chen Guo, who will be talking about MDPC codes. Okay. Uh, the title is uh, Key Recovery Attack on MDPC with CCU Security Using Decoding Errors. And uh, this is a joint work with my supervisors, Thomas Johnson and uh, Paul Stankowski. Uh, this is outline. I will start with motivation background, and then uh, I will introduce the new ideas, and uh, I include how, how to do key recovery uh, from distance spectrum, and also how to get the distance spectrum on plain QCMDPC, and also uh, on the CCE secure version. Uh, then I will give an intuitive ex explanation that why this works, and also uh, results and discussion conclusion. So let's go to motivation. Uh, we know that uh, po quantum computer uh, will break script system based on the hardness of factoring and discrete log, like uh, RCN ECC. So people are working on looking for post-quantum candidates. Uh, there are four. Uh, competitive directions like lattice-based, co-based, hash-based, and multi-variable-based crypto. Uh, for here, uh, I will talk about uh, co-based crypto. Uh, one important uh, uh, primitive is Maculis, uh PKC use, using GOPA codes, uh, but uh, it has a, a drawback. It's, uh, it has extremely large key size. Uh, so in 2013, Misowski, Tillich, Sandrio, and Barito, uh, they proposed a new scheme called QCMDPC. Uh, it has much smaller key size, and it has good security arguments. And also, it, it can be easily implemented. So uh, this is a scheme uh, recommended by some AU project for further study. Here, our goal is to recover the secret key. Okay, background on um, QCMDPC. So uh, let's start with QCMDPC codes. Uh, Quasi cyclic codes is a linear code that uh, every cyclic shift uh, by this step remains a code word. So we will assume that uh, N0 is true. And uh, if we do some index permutation, we can write the pair check matrix in this form. And uh, here, HI are circular matrices. Uh, we can also write G, get a systematic generator matrix. It's a dense matrix. So, uh, yeah, um, no. Uh, operations we can can be wheeled in this polynomial ring, and uh, we can write polynomial uh, in uh, in the vector form. So, uh, so what is MDPC? Uh, we know that it's a j extension of uh, LDPC. Uh, low density parity check code is a linear code that uh, has a sparse parity check matrix. Uh, usually it has uh, mm, small constant row weights. But uh, for MDPC, uh, it's a linear code that uh, with a denser but uh, still sparse uh, parity check matrix. So uh, it's always scale in this order of square root of n log n. Uh, and uh, a QCMDPC is just a quasi-cyclic MDPC code, and this is code parameter. Uh, this is a QCMDPC scheme, PKC scheme. Uh, for key generation, uh, we just uh, ch uh, choose uh, pa generate a pair check matrix H. Uh, so this H is a sparse matrix, and we derive the systematic generator matrix G. Here P is a dense matrix. So the public key is a dense matrix, and the private key is this sparse matrix. So for encoding, we generate a random error vector E with weight this, and uh, we compute cipher text like this. So for decoding, because we know this uh, sparse matrix, we can build a tenor graph and uh, do this uh, iterative decoding to get uh, the noise E, and we can get uh, plain, plain text from this uh, if we know the noise. Uh, uh, in this slide, this is a CPU secure version, and uh, if we extend in the security model beyond CPUs, then there are 
many attacks like resend attacks, reaction attacks, etc. So if we want to achieve CC security, one can use a CC conversion like uh, one suggested by Kabara in my in this year. And there are many other um, conversions. And these conversion, uh, these conversions make the choice of uh, error vector E random. So this is just parameters. Okay, this slide we discuss about uh, uh, Gallagher's bit flipping strategy. So after computing the syndrome, and uh, because we know this uh, sparse uh, matrix H, we can we can build this uh, tenor graph. Uh, this is check nodes, and this is uh, uh, these are check nodes, and these are digit nodes. Uh, we can add a counter to each digit node. So. Uh, in one, for the teeth iteration, we just run through the all the check nodes and to check if this uh, check equation is satisfied. If not, we just increase the counter uh, uh, corresponding to uh, uh, its uh, neighbor. Increase the counter. Then uh, after run through the check node, we run through all the digit nodes uh, to check its counter. If it's uh, too large, then we Flip the bit. Okay. Uh, next is the new idea part. Uh, this is our attacking scenario. So Alice will uh, send many messages to Bob. Uh, these these messages are encrypted using uh, uh, Bob's uh, public key, and Bob will de decrypt and uh, tell Alice uh, whether the uh, the, the de decryption is successful or not. In terms of secure model, this is called a reaction attack, and uh, this is a weaker model than CCA because uh, Alice uh, just need to know that the decryption is yes or not. He, he actually don't need to know the information, the decryption information. So in this sense, this is a stronger attack. Uh, we know that recent and reaction attack uh, have appeared before, but uh, the, all the previous attacks are uh, message recovery attack. Here we will try to recover the key. Uh, we will show that how to get the private key uh, from the decoding uh, error property for different error patterns. Uh, first, I will introduce a key related property called uh, distance spectrum. Uh, the distance spectrum is a set that includes all the possible uh, distances that uh, in this vector exists a pair of ones with distance d. And uh, uh, here, cyclic shift is allowed. Uh, and the distance can appear in many, uh, many times in this uh, vector, so in H0. So we also introduce a mul multiplicity. Uh, this is uh, an example. If we have this bit pattern, so we have R is 7, the possible uh, distance is like 1, 2, 3. But uh, uh, since in this, we have this uh, pattern like 1, 1, so uh, for distance one, uh, the multiple is one, but we don't have the pattern like one or one, so this one is zero. But we have two, uh, one, one or oh, oh, one, and also do a shift one or oh, oh, one, so we have this multiple two. If we say the distance spectrum is one three, so <coughs> uh, I will show how to construct a, a private key from this distance spectrum. Uh, it's a uh, quite naive algorithm. We just, uh, because we can do cyclic shift, so we put the first bit, uh, non-zero bit in position zero, and uh, we put the uh, second one on uh, position I zero. Here, I zero is smallest value uh, in this distance spectrum. Then we uh, inject the third bit, the fourth bit, uh, et cetera. Uh, the pro uh, the, uh, the the point is that if we inject uh, the fourth bit here, then uh, this distance and uh, this distance and uh, also this distance should be all in the distance spectrum. So uh, if it is unsatisfied, this is an, uh, it is an invalid pattern, so we just uh, choose another value. Uh, we will show that uh, it's efficient for this circumstance. Uh, so uh, the remaining problem is how to uh, recover the distance spectrum from the decoding error probability uh, for different error patterns. Uh, we have an ob observation is that uh, if we give a distance, 
uh, we consider the patterns that uh, at least one pair of uh, ones at distance d. So if d is in the distance spectrum, then the decoding error property is smaller than uh, that if d is not in the distance spectrum. So uh, this is a CPA case for playing QCMDPC. In this case, uh, error is not protected, so we can choose error, pad, uh, choose error from this uh, per CD. Uh, that uh, it's a set of all uh, binary vectors uh, having exactly T1s, and all the T1s are placed as pairs with distance D in the first half. So this is an example. We can see that uh, this is a pair of ones with distance D, and this is another pair. But uh, for the second part, it's, uh, it's all zero. So uh, the attack uh, is like, like this. Alice will repeat for uh, every distance, and he will choose uh, errors selected from CD and send message to Bob. And if there is a decoding error with Bob, then she will record it. And uh, after M messages, she will uh, be able to compute an empirical decoding uh, error probability. So uh, if uh, the another question is uh, if she has this uh, decoding error property, how to decide the multiplicity. Actually, uh, this is a uh, general shape. Uh, this is uh, error probability, so uh, we can see that it's grouped according to its multiplicity. And this is empirical results. We see that uh, uh, if we use this many decoding trials and uh, use pro proposed parameter for 8-bit security, uh, we can choose t, uh, the error t is 84. Uh, we can see that uh, it, it can be easily distinguished. So the algorithm is like uh, for every distance d, we just uh, try m decoding trials and get the empirical uh, error probability and do statistics test, test to get the multiplicity. And uh, if it's non-zero, we add it with uh, multiplicity into the distance spectrum. So this is the complexity. Uh, for CC secure version, because uh, uh, we can no longer control the error because error looks random. So uh, we just uh, form different subjects with design error patterns. That is, uh, given a distance d, we choose error patterns that contain at least one occurrence, one occurrence of distance d. Uh, we will show that uh, these subjects, can, uh, these subsets can still be used uh, to do to to decide the distance spectrum. Okay, this is um, algorithm. So we uh, get a collection of t cipher text and uh, uh, we record the decipherability. Uh, we just uh, choose uh, subsets we want to have, and uh, uh, we record the, the empirical decoding error property and do multiplicity classification, and this is uh, complexity. So uh, I will give an intuitive explanation. Uh, we here we choose our pattern from PCD, and uh, uh, the W is a weight of H0. Uh, we see that um, actually the first iteration plays a vital role in the decoding process because uh, Gallagher speed flipping algorithm uh, will terminate in a small number of iterations, uh, typically three to five iterations. So uh, this is one parity check matrix, uh, parity check equation looks like. So uh, if we look at all the R parity check and then we will create like uh, exactly t times w, w non-zero terms this because uh, for each non-zero term h i g uh, it will do a cyclic shift and uh, meet uh, meet with uh, have uh, uh, exactly t non-zero terms so we have uh, the the total uh, non-zero terms are, are t times w. So the problem is that we put this T type W different object in this R bucket because we have R per check equations and uh, uh, we, come counting, we count the number of objects in each bucket. Uh, even number of buckets, uh, even, even number of objects will be helpful because uh, one plus one is zero and uh, all number will act in the opposite. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, this table shows the relation between the number of non-zero uh, H I G E I S and also the number of uh, between and the, the number of correctly changed counters because uh, for for each equation it will change uh, change W uh, neighboring uh, counters 
he will tell them to stay or to, to increase. So we see that uh, even is good and uh, old is bad for decoding. So here, case one is that uh, we uh, introduce uh, that H0 contains two ones, and uh, case zero is that uh, this uh, another case it didn't it uh, doesn't appear. So uh, case one in case one we we artificially injected pairs of ones uh, that uh, we will make. We can see this is uh, the distant distribution. We can see that uh, uh, for for this. Uh, number is larger uh, equal than two, then the probability is almost the same, but for uh, this, uh, th this probability is higher and this probability is lower. So in case one, uh, we move the, the distribution to, to, uh, to the direction that are good for decoding. So in this case, the decoding error property will be low. Okay, this is results. Uh, uh, this, we use these parameters and uh, we use Gallagher speed flipping algorithm. Uh, so in expectation, it takes like uh, 2 to 35 operations, but uh, it can be slow in worst case. Uh, in simulation, we perform 3,000 trials using a single call of uh, a personal computer and the implementation is unoptimized. So on average, it takes like 144 seconds. And uh, in worst case, it's uh, 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 49 minutes. Uh, so in the CPA case, this is how to get uh, distance spectrum in CPA case. Uh, we see that uh, uh, we use Gallagher speed flipping algorithm and with uh, error pattern per CD and we choose TS84 and TS90. Here, this is uh, just parameters for ADB security and uh, this is a uh, case that uh, sometimes we can inject more errors to do a fault attack. So uh, if we inject more errors, then there is, uh, we require less numbers, less number of trials. So the complexity in this case for TS84 is two to 28 and uh, 40 is 90 is, uh, is 2 to 25. Uh, this is a result for a CC case, uh, also to recover the distance spectrum. Uh, this is error probability and this is distance. We can see that uh, the, uh, the, these, points are, these points are grouped according to the multiplicity. Uh, we need these many cipher tags and uh, uh, we do 10 formulation, 10 for, uh, simulations, and this is the worst case result. So, uh, for the yeah for the proposed security parameters uh, using Gallagher speed flipping uh, our decoder, then the complexity is about uh, two to forty. Uh, discussion. Uh, in our implementation, we use uh, original Gallagher speed flipping algorithm, and uh, definitely this is not the optimal one. Uh, the state of the art variant can improve with a factor like this. So uh, we can do a re reasonable guess that uh, the attack time one using one of these better decoder is the complexity uh, of uh, the complexity one using the original one times this factor. So. That is 2244 for the CPA case and 2255 for the CCA case if we use the suggested parameters of QCMDPC for ATP security. Uh, final remarks. Uh, we give a uh, reaction type Q recovery attack and this attack can break the CC secure version uh, using suggested, suggested uh, parameters. So uh, one important uh, question is to design countermeasure to resist this attack and uh, uh, I th uh, we think that the best way is to make the decoding error probability uh, really small like uh, uh, 2 to minus 80 for 80 bit security but uh, uh, it, uh, it seems difficult according to recent implementation. And uh, another thing is that even we can make the, uh, even if we can make the uh, decoding error probably small, then this attack may still be applicable if some side channel information is provided. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions for Chen?
So, uh, yeah, so uh, you, if you take the, the CCA model, so you, uh, you, you manage basically to, to, to break a CCA secure scheme using a chosen ciphertext attack. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a naive question. W was there a, a mistake in the proof originally, or, or do you attack something that was not covered by the original model? Uh, I, I think in the proof, they, they, they don't take this uh, uh, decoding error into consideration in the proof. It, uh, I don't see more questions. I have a question. So you were at the beginning advertising um, that this is a post-quantum scheme, right? So that this is why people are interested in this. So um, on the last slide, you said you would need an error probability of something like 2 to the minus 80 for 80-bit 80 security. Yeah. If you do post-quantum attacks, shouldn't that be 2 to the minus 160? If you're searching for inputs with Grover, that maybe give you something? Or, would that, uh, or wouldn't that matter? I is it really? Think, I think. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in Anchor or other schemes, they all have this. I think this is, uh, uh, if we have, uh, have uh, if we can achieve this condition, then we can, uh, I mean, there's no, no decoding error. We can. Okay. <laughs> so, so definitely we will receive, uh, resist this attack. But uh, maybe it, it, it's not, uh, yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> no, and not a necessary condition. And another question is, so if you want to increase the security to level to something like 128-bit security, right? Yeah. Would this become even harder or? <laughs> yeah, okay. Even harder. That was my intuition. <laughs> yeah. okay. Thanks. Cool. I don't see any further questions, so please join me in thanking Chen again. And that uh, concludes the session, so I guess there's coffee outside. <laughs> <laughs>